Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag, where I open my mail. If you want to send stuff in, you can be an individual working, you know, just send in some, I don't know, random things that people might find interesting. You could have like a new product that you want to like get out there to the masses, or you could be a commercial company. Send it into the mailbag, I open it, everyone sees it, and we talk about it. So the address is down the bottom, mailbag, you have to put mailbag on it, PO Box 7949, Norwest, New South Wales, 2153, Australia, not Austria. Let's go. Um, I have no idea who this one is from. I think it's one of these like repackaged ones that says sun in Dingley Valley in Victoria, but I think it's had a label stuck over the top. It's got some rubber baby buggy bumpers on it, so it's delicate. Tape is really annoying stuff, you know. <laughs> People just wrap things entirely in tape. I, uh, I've kind of sort of done it myself for some things. Slicer open. Uh, what do we go? Oh, it's got a ribbon. Oh, it's got a, look. It's got a seal. It's got a. It's got a wax seal. People don't do that anymore. I'd love to have a EV blog wax seal. You know that I could like, you know, put some candle wax on and then like seal stuff. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, grid. Oh yes, right. Yes, grid did contact me, and they do have a QR code that you can scan for those playing along at home. Um, people really liked the artwork last time. I think we've got some more artwork here. Let's, oh, look, look at the seal. Check it out. They've even put like a little leafy planty thing in there. Thank you very much. I've got a couple of pins. Oh, they're wall hanging hooks. So yes, yes, this is artwork. They did clue me up on this. I do believe they said that they would actually send two different things, but so yeah, there might be another one coming still in the mail, but I don't know, I've had this one for a little bit and the other one hasn't turned up. You've probably seen these around. I, I haven't seen it yet. I don't know what it is. What is it? <laughs> it's, oh, it's a Game Boy. Nintendo Game Boy. Yes, I'm not sure if Grid um, started this. I'm not sure if they're the pioneers of this, but yeah, they make these custom, uh, like they pull apart products, they do teardowns, and they make these really cool, like, info teardown things. You know, it's, oh, it's not a huge, no, it's not a huge amount of, ooh, technical detail in there. It's falling off. <laughs> it's coming apart. I can peel the, uh, that was satisfying. Yeah, it's completely modular. Isn't that groovy? They just uh, tear down products and then they just, you know, label them and, and you know, into it and arrange them in an, a nice arrangement and stuff like that. That is really quite nice. They've even gone to the effort to put something behind the screen there. So that's that's really good. Thank you very much, uh, Grid. I'll link them in down below. These things are absolutely great. Um, I love them. I've seen other people do like really hugely detailed and they do like specifications and they do, this one doesn't seem to have like, you know, it's just like labeled stuff, but it's very cool. This makes funky artwork. Like if you've got a business or something like that, you know, having like a tech business or something, hanging something like this in your foyer is a winner winner chicken dinner, I reckon. I will assemble this properly. Does it have those little tabs? Oh, there you have it. They've got little tabs on the back which slide under which keep it all in place. So there you go. That's going straight to the pool room. <laughs> that is great. Check them out down below. Thank you very much, Grid. Hang on, I'm shooting this later. The second one actually uh, turned up. So let's have a squiz and see what we've got. Got a nice, lovely little seal there. Again, beautiful. Oh, really is like Christmas time. <laughs> what has Santa bought? Ah, oh, come on, rip into it. Oh, we have. Ta da! Look at it. Check it out. An iPhone 4S. Beautiful. Woo! Oh, I'm going to have to lift that up to rip it off properly. No, oh, there we go. Beautiful. Steve Jobs signed. <laughs> Not personally. <laughs> but yeah, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. iPhone 4S. The 4S planted the scenes of what we now consider common knowledge. The smartphone really isn't just a phone. And, and beautifully laid out. I mean, I'd like to see more you know, technical specifications and stuff like that. But that is nice. The battery 
is not puffy. <laughs> Battery's not puffy. Geez, that's a small battery like these days, isn't it? Oh no, five watt hours? I don't know, haven't taken apart many shoe phones, but there you go. There's the iPhone shoe phone. This is Smart, Maxwell Smart, Agent 86. And uh, there's the A5 uh, processor in there, and there's the camera, and <laughs> the headphone socket, <laughs> you know, earpiece, power, power button <laughs> is important. And uh, yeah, isn't that nice? And you know, the SIM card holder. Anyway, that is really neat stuff. Like if you've got, as I said, if you've got like an office or something, and you've got, you know, foyer, you have customers come in or whatever, like having one of the, something like this, Hanging in your uh, tech company foyer is just a really cool thing to, for people to look at while they're waiting. I, I love it. So thank you very much. I'll link these in down below. Definitely check them out. Got the brown tape, so you know where this comes from. Um, it comes from All Day International um, in Hong Kong. So hi to all my um, Hong Kong viewers. It contains dangerous lithium batteries. Um, so let's crack into it. All it says on it is that it's a detector. I got no idea. It could be anything. Like, it could literally be anything. I got no clue. Oh, oh, cool. Okay. Um, uh, ah, ah, nursey. Fursey, nursey. Having another suck of the sav, but whoa, doesn't this look good? Um, I love these. I, I keep getting upgraded on the USB power monitors. Triple display. Look at that. Wow. That's a Bobby Dazzler. So that's a, yeah, so it's a USB A to USB A out, but it looks like it uh, it can do, um, oh, it's got type C micro, it's got two type C's micro. Oh, this looks like the duck's guts. Got more stuff. Um, Geez, how many sucks of the Sabbath first he had? Um, I, I don't know, but anyway, got a probe. So is this a multimeter? Got a temp temperature probe. Oh, oh, it's a new, um, a new soldering iron. Oh, sexy silicon USB cable. Oh, it's not feel a vision. Wish it was. Oh, wow. With metal. Um, are they? It's got a wanky imitation leather thing on it, but oh. So that's obviously the cable for that. We've got more stuff. Is that the same one? No, they've got two different ones. This is the uh, B58 and this is the B48P. So they've got two different USB monitors. Um, these are going straight to the pool room. And uh, by that, I mean like I've got a thing, like a tray underneath my uh, main bench over there that has all my USB knickknacks. Oh, we've got another bloody multimeter. Have we got another automatic <laughs> touch USB multimeter? Okay, so what we've got here is two rather confusing models, the FMB 48P and the FMB 58. I'm more interested in this, the FMB 58, this is uh, 45. Yankee Bucks uh, delivered, I think, and um, it really does a ton of stuff. I mean, I can't imagine any more capability than this. It's absolutely incredible. It's got Type-C in, it's got micro USB in, it's got Type-C out, it's got a power delivery switch because it does actually have a power delivery measurement uh, chip in it. Not sure why it just turned off there, but uh, anyway, um, and it's got a whole bunch of different stuff. I can't possibly review all of it. There's a uh, great current and voltage uh, display there. A very cool feature. If you go into fast charge here, it, uh, it curiously says, if you burn the device, please be responsible for it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, if you damage your device because you're using the wrong, you know, power delivery or whatever, you know, exceeding the voltage, whatever. But it will actually detect um, what your uh, source is capable of doing. And it's got all these different uh, triggering modes as well which is like really impressive like i'm just just absolutely stunned at the amount of uh, protocols but anyway we can go automatic detection like this and it can tell us what this pack supports i know it supports power delivery so come on you can do it it's not going to do it maybe because we have it plugged up its own clacker there we go i just restarted it power delivery none 
uh, because we're not plugged into the USB. But uh, this is what it can do. Can do the Huawei uh, FCP. Can do so. This pack can do uh, quick charge uh, two and three. As like it doesn't actually tell you that on the uh, bottom of it. So it's really handy to be able to see which protocols it actually uh, supports. So that, that's really nice. I would love to be able to plug this into the Type C, but it's not. Oh look, it worked. It finally it popped back up. I don't know. There, There is like a firmware bug or something in this that prevents it working. But you see, it can be powered from the external USB. Okay, ready. I'm ready to go into detection modes. And now it should detect that it can do power, oh, power delivery. Whoa, no. Oh, yeah, there we go. So it can do 18 watts power delivery. Yeah, it can do uh, quick charge two and three from there. There you go. But yeah, it definitely supports power delivery three up to um, 18 watts output. So that is correct. But now that we've got this actually working, can I go back out? Let's go into the main screen, okay? Let's actually get to the business end of this thing and let's actually power our soldering iron. So here we go. If we plug in the soldering iron, it should sh volt low. Why? I've got the power delivery. Switched on. Supports power delivery. Why is it not going through? I swear I had this working at one point and it's just, it's not working now. I, oh, I don't know. Bloody firmware is all over the shop. Anyway, you can see that we have, um, look, look at the resolution on this thing. It's got an, a 16-bit uh, ADC in it. They actually claim uh, external ADC and I think it's got a, far, no, a slower, no, that's stop mode. So you can freeze it. You can actually change the speed on that but anyway this is the other display which has a whole bunch of stuff on it there you go and uh, it's got your, your your capacity as well and stuff like that it's got your stats and which you can reset i think start limit last group i don't know i can like you could go to this thing's got all so a ton of stuff in it anyway there's your current and voltage uh, graph like that and there's, uh, and you go back to your menu. So, there you go. Let's actually plug it into the micro supply here. There you go. And, well, and let's see if we switch it on. Yeah, we get the spike. Well, a spike in current there. And it's going to draw, draw two different modes. But you see it like auto scaled there. I'm not sure if we can actually change. Yeah, you see. And then it just goes, it auto scales. That's really annoying. Maybe we can change that. Oh, that just resets it like that. And now, oh, don't know what. That's, has that just stopped it? What's going on there? It's almost like an oscilloscope type thing. It's measuring frequency. What the? Unbelievable. Anyway, it's got a ton of stuff in it. It'll take me ages to figure out um, the issues with these. And by the way, if you do want to see this one here, it's just, uh, it's, it's more basic. It doesn't have that uh, uh, menu um, system that the other one uh, has got. But anyway, it's got the graph and then it's got a cable measurement mode, which I thought, oh, you can measure the cable resistance if you plug the USB-C into there and there. But no, that's not what it does. You've got to hook it up to a constant current load, apparently, and then you can do reference cable comparisons between AB cables or something like that. It's not very well explained in the manual. The manual's full of all sorts of uh, Chinglish, but um, yeah, it's not terrific. But well, 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 something just went. Maybe that was a connection thing. Not sure what the deal is there. But for 45 bucks, like you just get amazing capabilities in this thing. The firmware will improve, you know, all that sort of jazz. But uh, yeah, you can get, and there's many different modes. There's many different modes in here. Can do all sorts of list modes and stuff. And whoop. Haven't even scratched the surface of what this thing can do. It's got uh, energy statistics, battery capacity calculations. It's got offline uh, recording. So we can go into there. There you go. So we can do battery uh, capacity testing by the looks of it. Uh, battery voltage. Looks like you can set the, I don't know, can you set the cutout, cutout voltage of that? You can set your conversion efficiency and... Also, it looks like you can have up 10 different groups of batteries. Like, it's like this thing does everything. They're just like really throwing the kitchen sink at it. And well, yeah, it's got a few issues, but um, it's very impressive. Anyway, these things just get more and more capable as the time goes on. And this one here has stupidly fast updating. Check out this. I mean, that's all right. It can actually get like a slower mode with an extra digit there. Uh, or faster mode like that. It's really quick updating. 
and superb 16-bit resolution in there. Don't know how accurate it is. Oh, I could just go crazy trying to uh, figure out and test all the different modes in these things. Just nuts. Anyway, that'll do it for the mailbag. I'll put a link in down below. I love these things. They're very handy. I use them all the time, and this is by far the most capable one I've got now. Can you do... Yeah, this has got Bluetooth too. Can you do, like, Bluetooth logging? Oh, God, I don't know. It's got so much stuff. It's unbelievable. But I think probably first you have too many products for their own good at the moment. It's just nuts. And it will actually change orient. It'll flip orientation like that as well. So yeah, you can read it up in any direction like that. That's pretty groovy. On the top, uh, we've got a uh, like a jog shuttle wheel interface, a back button, um, and also a uh, PC interface as well. Uh, I guess update the uh, firmware and do uh, stuff like that. Now, if you go into the toolbox here, I really liked the idea of this, a uh, power delivery converter to convert quick charge to, to power delivery, supposedly. But I've got my certified uh, quick charge bank here, and you can actually change the wattage here, right? So what, what wattage you actually uh, want, and it can't even do, it can go up to, well, it was at least, it defaulted to 30 before. So is that its, my, oh, no, it can go way beyond that, 60 watts is its maximum, but um, I get it says no response. So I thought maybe we could have, you know, converted quick charge into USB power delivery. That would have been quite novel, but I don't know. It doesn't seem to work, at least not with this uh, older battery pack anyway. But you saw it supported quick charge 2 and quick charge 3, so I don't know. Thank you very much, Nicolay M from Vancouver, Washington. Hi to all my viewers in Vancouver. I do like Vancouver, although I've heard... It's not going too well these days, I don't know. Leave it in the comments down below, but uh, let's get into this. Sorry I'm not doing this on the uh, on the other. Yeah, in camera, oh, we have an adapter. Board, looks like some sort of adapter board, some sort of adapter -y doodad. Aha, these are like a power supply electronic DC low banana jacks, ultra1design.com. Uh, wow. Aren't they groovy? These are very handy for when you uh, want to convert large binding posts into, looks like, banana plugs. You can see, check them out, they're actually different. Oh no, those ones are identical. So these ones are actually for the Rigol DL3000 um, series uh, electronic load. Oh, just realized I had fixed focus on there. Sorry about that, but uh, yeah, there you go. You can see the really thick uh, traces on there. That's what you want. Beautiful, double-sided jobby, none of that single-sided rubbish. Let's read the note. Nick from Ultra One Designs. Yes, um, make electronic loads easy to use. They don't come with banana plugs. Make them hard with simple banana cables. I know, it's really annoying. <laughs> um, currently sells two versions, one for the B&K, Keithley, and other similar loads, uh, and one version for the Rigol electronic uh, load. Okay, so the B&K and Keith easily actually have the same uh, distance. Anyway, hope to find them useful. I will try them out right now. And they come with a packet of the banana -y jacks, of course. So it looks like that they're going to uh, sit in there like that and just screw on the back like that. So they're going to stick out like that because, well, you want it because you're going to have the knobs on here. So yeah, you want to be able to stick your banana post out like that. So yep, let me try it out. There you go. I added a little bit of a chef's touch on there with the just uh, soldering the crimps over to that. So let's plug it on. And that is the really annoying before shot. And that has added some sanity. Yes. What a bobby dazzler. Now we can stick banana jacks right up the clacker. Thank you very much. And it doesn't uh, protrude below there either. So it'll, you know, if you've got it sitting flat on the bench, no whackers. Ah, beautiful. As for my BK Precision here, I've actually already got one. It's side mounted like this. I kind of prefer them to come out the front. So uh, let's try this one. Just want to show you the old one there. It was from a mailbag, um, ALX, sorry. I actually uh, forget. And it's got uh, extra current carrying capacity on the back there with the uh, solder mask uh, removed and the extra tin plate. There you have it, Bobby Dazzler sticking out the front. No whackers. Um, I think I prefer them sticking out the front like that than coming out the side, but eh, the other one's a bit more uh, robust design, I guess, but yeah, it's just handy having them sticking them out the front. Once again, it doesn't protrude uh, th um, below the bottom of the feet there, so it'll sit uh, flat on the bench. No whackers. Thanks, Nick. 
All right, let's take a look at another cheapy multimeter. <laughs> These have not been great lately, but hey, it's only 28 bucks, so you've got to take that into account. 28 bucks on AliExpress. So let's have a squiz what this one's got. Look at that, wrap for our protection. So we will do a quick evaluation on its merits for the price, because, you know, you've always got to uh, compare it for the price. It looks like we have a USB cable because... This thing is USB rechargeable. Five volts, one amp charging, thousand milliamp hour capacity. But the big question is, oh, I can peel that off, um, is what is the battery life? I don't like, if the battery life sucks, then there's just no point because there's so many long battery life options out there. Jesus, lightweight, no wackers. we peel the screen off for those protection aficionados. Look at that, oh, like I bought one, very reflective. Whether it's used by professionals, factory schools, hobbyists, or families, it, it is a rational think of the multifunction instrument. Um, yeah, no professional is going to uh, use this, I'm sorry. And the cat rating, cat 3, 1,000 volts, I am doubting that. Not independently certified, of course, but you don't expect it. Once again, 28 bucks. It's 10,000 count, which is good. Uh, three times per second updating is average. And 0.8% class plus three digits, so, you know, nothing to write home about, really. So I don't see the point in having a rechargeable solution for this. It does cap, goes up to 10 millifarads, you know, like, okay, but what's the battery life? I'm not seeing anything in here about battery life, so, uh, come on. Anyway, standard four millimeter banana jacks, are they the correct um, distance? Don't know, don't care. Okay, power button, let's turn it on, and um, yeah, okay, that is an LCD, it's one of these like no range switch, you know, auto jobbies, but it looks like you can go a volts DC, heard a relay click, so AC, another relay click, continuity, diode, capacitance, hertz, and temperature, <laughs> it shows both, which is, you know, that's pretty handy. So with the LCD, it might actually get reasonable battery life, but we won't know that until we actually um, open the thing. But, like, I, I don't know, there's just a lot of wasted space there. I'm like, okay, and the probes are exactly what you would expect on a uh, 28 buck instrument. So, no problems. I don't know why they give you right angle ones, though. Is that better or worse? I don't know. Probes are sharp, and they do look gold-plated, how they actually uh, are in practice. Oh, oh. Nope, it's not getting it. I mean, it's it's seeing it, but it's not latching the buzzer. So, yeah, that's poor. And the sound of the buzzer is I can barely hear it. Ah, it's hopeless. Non-contact? Is it this side? Ah, oh, sense? S? Is that what? No, that's the model. Oh, oh there we go. Jeez. That's a bit weak. Once again, the buzzer is, I can barely hear it. Yeah, like, okay, it works, but uh, I've seen better. I, I'm not getting a good vibe from this thing. Okay, what's the difference between NCV and live mode? What is live? They call it a firewire test. <laughs> so, yeah, it's designed to whack, like, you use the uh, positive probe and you stick it in to try and find, okay, Okay, I will stick it into a live PowerPoint. Yeah, that actually detects live. Doesn't detect neutral or earth, but it does detect the live. Okay, but once again, oh, the, the buzzer is just so weak, it's just pointless. And it's got the world's wimpiest light on. That is actually on. It is so wimpy. Like, it, it's just pointless. Oh my goodness. Wow, that's terrible, Muriel. There's a reference cap, eh, close enough. Did measure it on my 10K resistance standard. It was uh, bang on. I don't think you can, I can't see a way to manual range this thing. So auto mode, let's try it. AC, doesn't do that. It takes a while to get to DC, but it gets there. Let's see if there's any isolation between the comm jack and the USB over here. Uh, well, or something. It's not connected to the shell. It does seem isolated, so, okay, that's a positive. And no metal threaded inserts, of course, uh, but you wouldn't expect it. Oh, jeez, okay, looks like it might be spudge of time. Is that like a reset hole or something? Don't know. Actually, this thing's not going to have a fuse because it doesn't have a current 
range so you won't need to get in there but there you go I clipped there you go uh, yeah that's exactly what I expected <laughs> We've got input here. Okay, we've got a couple of series MELFs there um, for high voltage. We've got one uh, PTC there, that little uh, relay that we heard uh, click. You'll get relays inside these, um, like ones that don't have a range switch that need to like auto uh, range and stuff. And um, that's it. We've got a little battery when we can measure the current from that. Multimeter chipset, that's it. Um, and that'd be the main processor down there. Um, is it? Let's have a look. TM1621B. That actually looks like the LCD controller. And what's our main chipset over here? Upside down, all the electrons are going to fall out. That's a DreamTech DTM660. Uh, it's been around for quite a few years and it's used in a lot of, you know, cheapo multimeters. Nothing special there, nothing doing. And the Test Instrument Overkill of the Week award goes to <laughs> the Keysight E36731A. Look at this bad boy. Um, there is a channel um, on my EV Blog 2 channel. There is an unboxing of this, but I have not done a teardown or anything yet. Oh, it's complete overkill. It's an electronic load, power supply, and battery emulator. But anyway, it does have a very nice one microamp resolution on here. So we can measure 3.7 volt uh, nominal uh, battery battery supply we're getting 57 milliamp current draw and that's in auto mode so that's terrible Muriel let's see if that changes and DC volts mode no it's a constant 50 odd milliamps right regardless of what mode you put it in that's all the backlight in and whatnot on there to like no yeah nah <laughs> And well, you don't even need to get your confuser out uh, to calculate that a thousand milliamp hour battery divided by 50 odd, oh, <laughs> 50 odd milliamps there is 20 hours of operation. Who the heck wants to recharge their battery if on their multimeter, like you're using this in the field of it every 20 hours? Why? What advantage are you gaining? from this thing what advantage whatsoever it's got a piss weak continuity buzzer in it and the screen i like is not that bright why do you need color all that wankery no 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 just went outside with this thing to uh test it out in the bright sun and yeah i no don't bother like it's you can still read it but it's like i don't know why anyone would would have this thing um it, what like 20 hours battery life, absolute tops for this thing, regardless of the range. And then you've got to, you know, like, you know, like plug it in to recharge it and stuff like that. You can get hundreds and hundreds of hours out of just any mainstream proper multimeter without all the bloody constant backlight rubbish on it. And it's got a piss weak continuity uh, tester. It's got a piss weak light on the back of it. Um, and it's like you can't do manual range or anything. No, just why? No. No, I don't see who that's for. I, yeah. Catch you next time.